Hello, my name is Mrs Rycroft and I'm here today to talk to you about how you can go about preparing yourself to write about a piece of unseen poetry. The certificate in English Literature from Edexcel that's taken at Slough Grammar School has two papers to it and on the second paper you'll be writing about Anthology C and then you'll be writing about either a piece of prose or a piece of poetry that you've not had a chance to prepare and study before. That's why it's called Unseen because it's something that highly likely you won't have seen before. Um, it's half of the marks on the paper and you need to be prepared for it so here's how you go about doing it. The first thing you need to understand is that not everybody can do these things just off the top of their head. Practically everybody in the known universe has to prepare for exams. You'll be a very lucky person if you don't. And this kind of question is exactly the same. You have to practice. And if you don't read a lot, then you're not going to have a broad range of um, experience to draw upon. What you must remember is that once you're sitting in the exam hall, um, that's it, preparation is over. So if you're sitting there and you're looking at a poem you just don't get the idea that are going on on the page make your absolute best guess based on the things that you do know about and the things that you can draw an understanding from and then move on do not get yourself tangled up do not wait for inspiration to strike because you'll be highly unlikely that you're suddenly going to get a sunbeam shooting through one of the windows straight down onto your exam paper highlighting the words you need to pay attention to and giving you that oh my goodness I can see it moment just get on with what you know make sure you practice and prepare and make sure you train your mind in the strategy with which you can succeed okay there are lots of things you need to know about okay there are two four six eight different things nine ten different things sorry on this page all of which you need to understand um, how to apply when you're talking about a poem so the idea is that imagery is the overarching umbrella term for all of the devices that are used to paint pictures in the reader's imagination by a poet if you read down I've given you definitions of all of these things I'm not going to read the definitions out for you because I'm fairly sure that all of you can read those off the screen for yourself what I will say is is that they're grouped into little sections so we've got alliteration and assonance which talk about sounds in words using specific letters to create those sounds we've got metaphor and simile which talks about the way that it accesses your imagination to create comparisons and allow you to draw on your own knowledge to compare one item with another directly or to compare one item like another item so make a comparative um, draw a comparative idea between the two so you say something is something else or something is like something else onomatopoeia sound effect obviously whiz bang woof meow moo quack and so on um, the next two are about opposite opposing ideas or opposing words so think about the idea of a paradox which is created by two, using two ideas which generally don't feel like they belong together in order to highlight um, the features of each other the idea of oxymoron is doing exactly the same but with words instead of ideas okay so if you want to think about paradox you could think about the poem hide and seek where we're using the idea of a game comparing it to the idea of war one of which obviously is frivolous and the other which is extremely serious oxymoron does that with two words so you could look at burning ice or loving hate um, both of which taken from Shakespeare from Romeo and Juliet so have a little think about that there's plenty to draw on from all kinds of places but by using two words that are deliberately and awkwardly opposed to each other you highlight the features of both um, personification is where we take obviously a non-living object and we give it qualities of something that is alive um, in order to kind of highlight the way that a person reacts to that object or the, uh, it has an emotional response to the effect of that object upon them so you could talk about how um, the sun smiles on you it doesn't smile on you obviously because it has no mouth or teeth or emotions with which to feel happy but the heat and the positive light that it gives off can make you feel like you are being um, positively influenced and supported by the fact that it's there and it's a sunshiny lovely day a repetition something I do all the time is where I say the same thing again and again to kind of 
reinforce the um, necess necessity for analysing or thinking about the idea that I'm putting forward. So repetition is where I say something again and again. Oh, you get the idea. Okay, I'm moving on. Um, so, why did I say all poetic, poetic devices are imagery anyway? Let's, so let's have a look. Every poetic device conveys an image and it taps into imagination, ergo the name imagery. So what I want you to do now is to pause this um, screencast for a few moments and ask yourself, what is the purpose of poetry? Think about it. What's the purpose of poetry? Why do people write it? Pause now. Have a quick go. Maybe come up with three or four ideas. Five if you're feeling really adventurous. And I'll see you again in a few moments. Did you pause it? I hope you did. Don't be cheating now. Okay, so here are my ideas. Um, I think that the uh, purpose of poetry initially is emotional. It's it's generally going to be an emotional connection of some description. So I might want to share a thought or an idea. I might want to tell somebody a story that particularly connects with them or connects with me, something I feel is important enough to write down on a piece of paper and share with others. I might want to share an experience. I might want to explore an emotion. I might want to tell people, like the war photographer, or like Caroline Duffy, through war photographer just how horrible an experience I've had or well, think about the mother in a refugee camp just how horrible an experience a Chobi sees when he goes there he wants to share that he wants us to feel the way he feels and there are a hundred and one million gajillion gazillion fazillion different reasons for writing poetry but the one I've never come across is just to convey information Okay, it's not writing to um, convey facts and information solely. It's writing to tap into the emotion and the imagination of the reader. It's writing to make a point. Sometimes it's a bit obtuse. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to grasp exactly what the poet wants you to think about. Sometimes it's a poem about love, you hate you, want to be with you, never want to see you again, you're the love of my life, uh, um, love is like an onion or ogres, and there's a whole bunch of other reasons, but it's never sterile. It never doesn't want you to think and feel about the things it's talking about. So you consider that, think about why poetry is written. Okay, so there are um, kind of five steps to go through to make sure you get on with writing about an unseen piece of poetry. I'm not going to read each one of these to you. I really genuinely am not because you can pause now and read it through for yourself and read it as many times as you like. And you can screen capture it and print it out and put it in your folders and highlight bits of it and say to your teacher, look at this, I know what I'm doing. But if you don't apply it, it's absolutely useless. Okay, so listen carefully. This is what you need to do. Number one, read the whole thing, including the title, and read all the stuff that the exam board chooses to print on the piece of paper in front of you. They won't have given you anything that you're not meant to use or think about, so make sure that you wonder why it's there and you read it. Okay, next thing, think about a simple definition of that poem. Make sure you include thinking about the title what it's all about think about the kind of themes that you might be able to see there who's talking to whom and why really straightforward third that's the nuts and bolts bit so that's looking at the idea of the, the poem being hung on a frame okay when you put a picture on a wall you need needs to be framed and there needs to be a nail and a piece of string so when you're creating an image with a poem you need to have a frame and a nail and a piece of string so poetically what are those elements what form does the poem take on what's the rhyme scheme like what poetic devices are going on what's happening inside think about all the different technical words that you could use don't say verse stay say stanza know the different words for all the different kind of lengths of stanza you know, triplets quatrains couplets all of that sort of stuff understand what a sonnet is okay so you know you look at something and you go hang on a minute that's a bit short count the lines up Ooh, hold on that's got enough lines in it to be a sonnet test out the rhyme scheme bazinga it's a sonnet so make sure you think about those kind of things know the technical wordplay that's something that even the most scientific and mathematical of brain can bend itself around okay that is something that all of you can get right and all of you can learn how to get right so make sure you do 
really straightforward next thing you need to do is think about all of that imagery that I talked about a couple of slides back okay not a poem in the universe that is devoid of imagery so don't be sitting there and writing this poem has no imagery it does have imagery it's just subtle and it's just kind of restrained and refrained and hidden a little bit so you just need to look a bit harder that's all um, the exam board's not going to give you a poem with nothing in it to write about so dig around and find it dead easy. If you know what those poetic devices are, how to identify them, you can go through and annotate. Remember you can write all over the exam paper. You know, Don't be scared to take a highlighter pen to it and annotate away. Once you've done all of those four things, you need to plan and then write your response. Yep, that's right, you heard me. You don't start actually writing until you've got all the way to that fifth point. You think, you plan, you annotate and then you write. When you are sitting in that exam hall, there will be some people who, like mad concert pianists, hold their pen above their head, take a massive deep breath and then start scribbling and don't stop for the next two and a half hours until the invigilator looks them in the eye and says, yes, that means you, stop writing now. Um, they're panicking, okay? They're not going to produce an amazing piece of writing without thinking, preparing and planning. This is what you are doing when you go through the first four steps. Don't get put off your game by somebody sat next to you scribbling away like manic, you know, panic monster, sticking their hand up every five minutes for another piece of paper and all those other things. Okay? It's quality we're after. It's thoughtful, insightful and sustained analysis. That's what the mark scheme says. Insightful and sustained and perceptive analysis. You can't do that with an unseen piece of poetry, or prose for that matter, if you haven't stopped and picked it to pieces and thought about it and analysed it. Honestly, you can't. You have to trust to this method. I know it works. It's worked for lots of students in the past and it will work for you. Have a little faith in it and practice, okay? Next step you need to do, basically what I've just said, have a bit of faith and practice. Get a hold of a bunch of mid-length poems that will tell you there exactly what to do. Get a hold of the mark scheme and have a keep have a go and keep going at it until you start to get into that top band of marks. Um, if you're not sure what you're doing, you get a bit stuck, ask your English teacher to have a quick look over the response that you've written. Okay, Be reasonable, because remember that everybody this time of the year is super busy and very focused on everybody's achievement and, and not just your own. Um, and so don't give a teacher a piece of work and then find them 20 minutes later and ask them if they've marked it. That's not really very fair. We know we know that you're stressed and you know that we're on your side okay we will do it for you but you need to be reasonable in your expectations if you can't wait find a friend okay pick a poem together both of you write a response to it swap over use the mark scheme mark each other's work dead easy okay if you can't think of any poems poemhunter.com is an excellent place to go and look you can just stick in um you know, you could stick in sonnet, for example, and it'll come up with a whole bunch of sonnets that you can examine. Uh, you could stick in poems about and pick a topic and pick one of the off of there that you like the look of. All kinds of things you can do. Just make sure that you focus on practicing. Okay? There's lots and lots. Okay? If your friend is confident that they know how to do this, but they don't get feel very confident in maths, offer to check over one of their maths questions that you know how to do if they'll have a look at your poetry. It doesn't matter how the practice happens, just as long as it gets done. Alright? Good luck, everybody. I know that you can do this. Don't panic. Don't lose the plot. Don't get all stressed and unhappy and upset about it. Just practice. Practice, 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 practice. There, there's that repetition for you, see? I told you I was going to end up repeating myself. Practice, 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 practice. Um, good luck, everyone. And don't forget to come and find me in my classroom. The next podcast I'm going to make... Sorry, screw
screencast, not podcast, screencast, the next screencast I'm going to make, um, I'm going to talk you through a poem so you can see just how these things are applied and the sort of things you could write about. So look for it. It's uh, It will be labelled practice piece, I would imagine, um, and I'm hopefully it will be up just as soon as this one is too. So good luck everybody and uh, may the odds be ever in your favour.